One key warning sign for a cult mm -hmm. is that they control the relationships of followers. Do you control what relationships people have? Well, firstly, um, I think a lot of these questions use the term followers all the time. And I've got to address this. Yeah. We don't have followers. We have people who come along to seminars and who uh, come along to events that we hold for free. And most of them don't follow us at all. In fact, my, most of them we don't even know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so mm -hmm. they're definitely not what I would classify as a follower. If, the, if we're talking about a follower in terms of a person who's attempting to practice the principles of divine truth, then I'm sure there must be lots of followers. Yeah. But I don't know them. Mm -hmm. They're not people that we engage in our day-to-day -day life or even have communication with in our day-to-day -day life. So first of all, you need to talk about this idea or concept of followers. Yeah. This is a charged statement, mm -hmm. which is a very clever way of trying to attempt to state that there is a cult because you've got followers. But, but the reality is, under the definition of followers, most religious faiths would have followers and therefore they would all be cults. Mm -hmm. and, and many of them are, by the way, cults in my opinion, because they do force people, things upon people. They try and manipulate people. They try to control people. They have a list of written rules and laws, none of which we have. Yeah. But the religions have them. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, they are cults more than I am, more than I am a leader of a cult or, or uh, trying to begin a cult because we, we have no desire to begin any organisation other than the organisation we already have, which is Divine Truth, which is just a physical business organisation mm -hmm. required for tax purposes in Australia. Yeah. So the question was then about uh, the relationships, relationships uh, that you... our so-called followers have. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you control what relationships people have? No, not at all. They're allowed to have their own relationships. I encourage you to have as many relationships. I'm not talking about sexual relationships here. I, but I encourage a person to have as many relationships with as many people as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Develop friendships, develop relationships, live in the world. You need to be of the world, but not a part of the world. Right? In the I, world, but not of it. Yeah, really, in yeah. the world, but not of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, the re, and what I mean by being not of it, be love instead. You know, there's a lot of unloving things that go on in this world. Don't do those things. You know, don't pr practice those things. Demonstrate what it's like to be love instead, to mm -hmm. be loving individual instead. Now... There are many people who have issues with their relationships. There are many people who come to us and ask us for advice with regard to their relationships. We have on the internet a whole series of frequently asked questions yeah. about partner-based relationships and parent-children relationships. My suggestion is if you want to hear what I'm saying about relationships, go to those and have a listen to those. Yeah. You'll see that they are all of the statements will make logical sense. They will all be loving and truthful. They certainly won't be implying that you've got to do what I say. They won't be implying that just because I'm Jesus, you should listen to me or any of those other things. Mm -hmm. They will just be statements of truth and statements of what is loving. That's all. And that's all we do. We make statements of what is truth, statements of what is loving, and how that impacts a relationship will be up to the people inside the relationship as to what they choose to do with that information. And we have no control over it. And also we have no desire to control it, yeah. just as God has no desire to control it. And we have no desire to break up people or desire to put people together. Yeah. They all need to make their own choices regarding their own relationships. And what we do or don't do with them is just, we all we do is share the truth with them and we definitely do not tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel, again, it's pointless to tell somebody what to do because sooner or later they are going to do what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you need to do is encourage them to do what they want in harmony with love. And that's what we're trying to encourage people to do. Mm. And really to find the rewards of acting in when love. we mm. act in love. Yeah, yeah. yeah to, to discover the rewards of doing so. Um, most people don't understand the rewards of doing so, of course, and they don't even have any trust or faith in the rewards of doing so. So what we're trying to do is encourage that, that faith and trust in the rewards of living in a loving manner mm -hmm. with everybody that you meet, including your partner relationships, your parent-children relationships, and all other relationships. Now, that means that you'll be a loving, you'll be loving to yourself and the other person. And this is where we see a lot of things breaking down we see that a lot of people who accuse 
our so-called followers, <laughs> only people who come along to our seminars, they accuse people who come along to our seminars of, you know, breaking up the family. No, they, many people who come along to the seminars are trying to be more loving to themselves. And in the, in the process of becoming more loving with themselves, they realise they're getting attacked a lot by their family. And under those circumstances, they're trying to address the lack of love in their family. Mm -hmm. And we're encouraging them to do that, sure. Mm. Because of course you would encourage a person to do that. That's what a psychologist would encourage a person to do. Yeah. And that's certainly what I would definitely encourage a person to do, not because I'm a psychologist, but because I think that love is the most important <laughs> thing you can engage. Yeah. And, and when you're being berated or belittled or humiliated by your family, that's not loving on their part. What are you going to do about that? There's yeah. something you have to do if you want to get out of that particular environment and learn how to become a loving person. And that might mean for a period of time that you withdraw from the family as a result. I'm okay with that. And so should the family be. Mm -hmm. The family shouldn't think that they can abusively treat somebody badly and then hope that that person remains uh, connected to the family. Yeah. You know, that, that is a cult. A cult is a, is a group of people who abuse another group of people mm -hmm. and then think that that second group should remain with the cult. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of families are doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't encourage that at all. So again, these kind of questions are all related around, of course, I've got a lot of advice that I give people about relationships. And, uh, and of course, I'm going to continue giving them mm -hmm. because there are a lot of relationships on this planet that are completely out of harmony with love.